Amen. So prayer is very important to see, to see the movement of the Holy Spirit, to see the movement of God in our churches and in our lives. Before I mention the three things that I learned about secret place, I want to mention how important it is to have a secret place. I believe each one of us either lives in a secret place or in a secret sin. Something that you're hiding, something you're deleting after you're browsing the internet, something that after you go you make sure you delete the history. The moment you have to delete conversations, the moment you have to delete certain things, the moment you find yourself living in secret sin, it's one of the first signs that sometimes you might not be living in a secret place. There was two stories in the Old Testament. One of them was Rahab. Rahab, the scripture says that she hid spies in, in Joshua chapter 6 verse 25 and says that Joshua spared Rahab the harlot, her father's household and all that she had for she dwells in Israel this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. So what Rahab does is that she lives in a very bad place. She herself is not doing good right now. She does for living what's, what's not good but in that culture you know the morals were not like the morals today especially to those of us who are Christians so it was acceptable but still it wasn't good for her and the spies come in and you know instead of just greeting and meeting them she does something that's radical she takes them home and she doesn't just take them home the scripture says is that she hides them she doesn't just hide them she protects them because when the king comes and says give them up she says, I don't know what you're talking about. She hides them. And because of what she hides, the scripture says that her life becomes transformed. Not only she is saved from the wrath of God, her family is saved from the wrath of God. And we know not only she is saved, she gets a different job. She no longer is a harlot. And not only that, but being a harlot, she marries a good man. Actually, one of the guys she was hiding, Salmon, she marries him and not only she marries a good man, an ex-prostitute, but the scripture says out of her seed comes the king of Israel and the son of the living God. Whatever you're hiding today can change your life tomorrow. Whatever you're hiding today will change your life tomorrow. If you are hiding the presence of God, if you are hiding the Holy Spirit in your private life, if you are hiding a spy, your life will change, your career will change, your relationship will change, your future will change. But at the same time as Rahab is hiding spies, Achan in the same similar story, he was hiding something else under his tent. He was hiding the forbidden things, accursed things under his tent. So one is hiding spies, the other one is hiding clothes. One was saved, Achan was destroyed. Rahab's family was rescued, Achan's family was stoned. Rahab lived in Jericho, Achan loved Jericho. Rahab wanted to be like Israel, Achan wanted to be like Jericho. There is two kinds of people in this room today. There are Rahab's and there are Achan's. Rahab is not somebody that things don't look really good on the outside in her life but it's what she hides privately that will change the course of her life publicly in the future. And there are Achan's. It's the guys who have the title. It's the guys who know how to speak right, who know how to dress right, who know how to appeal righteous but privately they are hiding things under their tent that are not good. Not only they're not hosting God but they are hiding something that is not good and within time your private compromise will become a public scandal. It will affect your family, it will affect your children, it will affect your business, it will affect your health, it will affect every area of your life. Anything that's hidden will be revealed and whatever you're hiding today, are you hiding spies or are you hiding the Babylonian clothes? Your secret life, your secret place has to be a place where you're hosting God, not hiding sin. Are you Achan or are you Rahab? Maybe on the outside people don't give a second thought about you. There's nothing special. You're so average. I give you a secret today. The goal of Christian life is not to avoid hiding sin. Duh. Everybody knows that. 
the best way to not hide sin is to host the spirit I'm not encouraging today please get rid of the sin in your life no don't get rid of the sin replace the sin with something else have secrets make sure your secrets is like Samson he had a secret it was his connection to God make sure that you don't give that secret up for nobody under no circumstances because that secret is the secret of your future success it will change who you are it will change how you dress how you live it will change everything about you because whatever is hidden will be revealed the world will know you other people will know you and there was nothing special about you except the Bible says Rahab hid spies. She didn't have a great prayer life. She didn't have a great word life. She just simply had a secret and her secret became real. It changed her destiny. What is your secret? Is a secret place or a secret sin? In the New Testament, Apostle Paul says in Corinthians, in Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 it says the following, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that what for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, somebody say gold, somebody say silver, and somebody say precious stones. All the ladies love all of these, okay maybe not the silver, <laughs> but diamonds, right? So gold, silver and diamonds. Wood, hay and straw. Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. A fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he had built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will, uh, burned, he will suffer loss for he himself will be saved yet as though through the fire. So Paul tells us pretty much the same story that we just, we just learned in Joshua about a secret life. So he makes it very clear. We all build on Christ. Amen. Christ is the foundation. Can I, can I hear an amen? So Christ is the foundation for every person. Christ is our identity. Christ is our anchor. Christ is the foundation. But Paul in here says, I want you to notice this about this verse. He says that, but each man builds on Christ differently. Each one has a Christ as a foundation but each man uses different material to build on Christ and he gives us two categories of material. I'll give you a little Bible study right now. If you're taking notes I want you to make the difference between these two. The first category he gives us is gold, silver and precious stones and the second category is he gives us wood, hay and straw. Gold, silver and precious stones. Whoever's in the back there if you can help hook us up with some notes. Gold, silver and precious stones. Wood, hay and straw. Gold, silver, precious stones. Wood, hay and straw. The first difference is wood. Wood is over there. Wood, hay and straw. The difference between gold, silver and precious stones as you see behind me is one is found on the ground. This one is underground. The second difference is one comes in big quantities, the other one comes usually in small quantities. You see the difference is that one is cheap, the other one is expensive. One is common, the other one is rare. One gets burned by fire, the other one gets purified by fire. Christ is our foundation. But the material you build your career, your family, your ministry on, you pretty much have two options. One is the wood, hay and straw. What is that? Wood, hay and straw, it's things that people see. It's big, it's cheap, it's common and it doesn't stand the test of time. And on the judgment day, the eyes of Jesus that have flame will burn through everything that you've done. Your success, your accomplishments, your Roth IRA, your retirement funds, all of your vacations, all of your good success, good things that you've done. It will go through with fire and everything you've done that looked good on Instagram. It looked great in front of your family members. But was it built with things that people don't see, things that cost, things that maybe were not big and things that time, trials and tribulations cannot wipe out but only purify. In other words, we're building our life on Jesus but we must be building our life with Jesus. 
because you can build your life in America today with your degree you can build your marriage today in the United States with your intellect and with your wisdom and your discipline you can build a ministry today on a great team on a great management and a great software you can build a lot of things today without an intimate relationship with Jesus as long as you work hard and as long as you work smart your ministry can become big your family can become successful and that is awesome I applaud big nice expensive buildings but the question is not how big it is in the eyes of men the question is can it last when I die can it last through a scandal a trial a tribulation can it last through a human rejection can it last if persecution rises against the church right now and going to church would mean you're going to jail will the church still be there will the family still serve God can it go through the fire and get purer or smaller I'm challenged by that personally as a pastor and as a husband and as a Christian. I build my life on Jesus. I know that. You know that. You build your life on Jesus. But in eternity what will matter is not how big things got. It's what material did I use building it. Was my dependence upon my gift or on my intimacy? was my dependence and my, my, my ability to communicate and my ability to relate to people and my ability to promote myself and my ability to make finances or was my dependence though built on Jesus built also with my devotional intimacy with the Holy Spirit I want to challenge you today that in eternity a lot of rich people on earth will be poor and a lot of poor people will be rich but it's not going to be dependent on how rich you were or poor you were on earth that doesn't matter what matters is this were you building on Jesus and number two were you building with Jesus with gold silver precious stones or with wood hay and straw wood hay and straw is easy to find it's easy to impress others with it wood hay and straw doesn't require prayer fasting giving it doesn't require consecration it requires being smart and working hard and our culture honors it our culture applauds it Christian world today will stand and applaud that and that is awesome I'm one of those people I want nice big fast things but in eternity Jesus made it very clear his eyes will go through everything I've built and I will be saved but the reward is not dependent on how big things were it's how good things were built with him or just with myself